Hello, my name is Jaborgo and welcome back to Jaborgo Studios. And I just I just want to say that there's a lot of negativity on this platform right now. And I, you know what I said? I said to hell, hell with it. Let, let's bring some positivity on this platform. And at first I thought I should tackle this issue just like everyone else is and upload 45 minute unedited Naruto episodes with me blankly staring at my monitor and making some otherworldly screech when something of minor importance to the plot occurs. And then I thought that was a good idea, but then I figured out that I like making money and being able to upload my videos. And so I decided to refrain from stealing content from one of the biggest television networks in Japan, and I just didn't do it. I laid in bed, tossing and turning at night, trying to figure out how to make original content that people would enjoy. Then I got a terrifying flashback of content I used to make, reviews. I said to myself, perfect, I shall make reviews of anything I can get my hands on, and I got to work. The game I first decided to review is my first and favorite Sonic game ever, Sonic Generations. Man, Sonic Generations, where do I even begin? Well, I guess it came out in November of 2011, but Little Unoriginal here didn't get it until 2013 in an eBay bundle with- <laughs> But that's a video for another day. This game was right off the tail of Sonic Colors, a game many people praise for its quality, and a game many despise for introducing Wisps to the series, myself included. And there's a shocking similarity between Colors and Generations. Kinda in the same way I just described. Generations is praised for perfecting the boost formula, but it's despised for the creation of classic Sonic. Now, if you've played a modern boost Sonic game, you now have a full grasp on how Generations' plot goes. Seriously, the story of this game boiled down is literally just, Hey Tails, does this place look familiar to you? And the only cutscenes that really matter are the first one and the last, like, three. But if I want to do my job correctly, I guess I'll run through the plot. So, it's just an average day in Green Hill. By the way, I'm not docking points for including Green Hill since it had only appeared a few times by then. Sonic is just having his usual run through the place as he usually does, when suddenly he looks in the air and cross fades to white. Suddenly we cut to our boy's spread cheeks at the sight of Chaos Zero the Fox running to a table in the middle of nowhere. He says someone will be there any minute. Ooh, I wonder who it'll be. Maybe a forgotten character that hasn't shown up in 15 years. It's just Roger Craig Smith. Don't get your hopes high. Also, what the heck? I will never accept the notion that Tails is faster than Sonic and Adventure doesn't count because he cheated in that game. Anyways, it's revealed that this was all a setup for Sonic's surprise birthday party, complete with a cake with the Sonic Team logo on it. Weirdly enough, there's no mention of Sonic's age. This is just a theory, but maybe Sega doesn't feel like outing a lot of fan artists as pedophiles just yet. But everyone celebrates Sonic's birthday when... Everyone fucking dies. Sonic then wakes up in a white void when he notices Green Hill in the background, but without any color. After a quick romp through Green Hill, Sonic notices that the white statue of Spread Cheeks the Fox getting its color back, reviving Tails. The story gets a little stale and repetitive from this point on, beat a stage, revive the corpse of your friend, repeat until the boss. So let's skip to the gameplay and we'll come back to the story in a minute. 
Sonic Generations is divided into two different gameplay styles, modern and classic. Let's start with classic since it's the first thing you play in the game. If you've played the Genesis games, specifically Sonic 3, just take that, make it 2.5D, adjust the spin dash a little, and you have the classic part of the game. Sonic has all of his abilities from the Genesis games, the spin dash, and that's it. You can unlock extra abilities like the elemental shields, but there's nothing wrong. I will say it is an absolute godsend that they made it so that you can pull off a fully charged spin dash with just the press of the X button, and I will always commend them for that. But there are a few problems. Generations uses the Hedgehog engine. All of it. Which means the classic stages are in 3D, but just with some invisible walls stopping Sonic from going 3D. But sometimes, mainly when performing a spin dash after turning around, Sonic will try to spin dash across the Z-axis and comes to a dead halt. Also, sometimes when you get hit, the rings will break through the invisible walls somehow, making them impossible to grab back, which is really annoying when you have one ring left and it just all of a sudden flies off and you can't grab it. But that doesn't, that doesn't spoil the gameplay uh, too badly, I would say. Modern Sonic is your basic Unleashed in Colors gameplay where you use rings, tricks, and destroyed robots to fill up your boost meter. And once it's full, with the press of the X button, Sonic blasts off at super speed, becoming invulnerable to everything except pits, spikes, and every hazard that's not a robot. Now, how do you perform tricks? There are these special ramps in certain zones and rainbow rings where once you pass through them you spam the control stick in every direction humanly possible to perform tricks, ending them off with the press of both bumpers to end them in a pose that reeks of adventure. God, I missed that game. Every trick you do fills your boost meter and even overflows it and gives you extra boost opportunity, kind of like Sonic Rush, except it's limited and it just keeps going down. You also have the homing attack where once you jump this little green reticle appears, press A again and you shoot over to the targeted item, destroying it. You can also drift by pressing the trigger in the corresponding direction you want to go. And finally you have the light speed dash, but it works a little differently than in the Dreamcast games. You can only use them on trails of rings with these shiny bubbles around them, and it's not really utilized outside of getting a few red star rings. Speaking of red star rings, those little bastards are in this game too, but unlike Sonic Forces, they actually unlock something worthwhile. Mainly concept art and music you can play in stages, but you also unlock extra abilities like the elemental shields for classic Sonic, an extension to your boost meter, and my personal favorite, the homing attack for classic Sonic. Now, let's finish up this story. After Sonic finishes running through Green Hill, the color reappears in it, making it prime to be used in forces, just with sand this time. Sonic then notices Chemical Plant in the background and explores there, with classic Sonic following close behind. Now, the two don't actually meet until the first boss. This is how you progress in Sonic Generations. You have to beat both acts to unlock the next level. There are also these little challenge gates for each stage, and you have to beat at least one of them to unlock a boss key to fight the boss. Hey, let's talk about the bosses, because they're honestly my favorite parts of this game. Now, there are two types of boss battles. Rival battles and boss battles. Rival battles are fights between Sonic and a rival from a previous game. You fight Metal Sonic with Classic Sonic, and Shadow and Silver with Modern Sonic. Strangely enough, you don't fight Knuckles with Classic Sonic. He was obviously a rival in Sonic 3, but Sega doesn't really like referencing Sonic 3, so it makes sense, I guess. All of these rival battles boil down to is run, hit the opponent's weak spot when it shows up, rinse and repeat until they crash into whatever happens. As for boss battles, they're more intense and they usually end off an area of the game. There's the Death Egg Robot for Classic Sonic, and Perfect Chaos and the Egg Dragoon for Modern Sonic. These are a little more involved and usually have two phases, and they're honestly my favorite parts beca mainly because of the bangers these fights bring.
Bosses and rival battles are also how you get Chaos Emeralds. Yep, these bad boys are also in this game, but you can only use them after you beat the game, but it's not really a negative for me since this game has a lot of replay value with those challenge gates, and let me tell you, it's been... hell, five years and I still haven't beaten the game 100%. After you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you confront the being that sent you to this place, and shocker, it's Eggman. But he has some help from Dr. Robotnik. And they make a funny joke about how no one calls him Robotnik anymore, which just shatters my heart because Robotnik is a lot more of a villainous name than Eggman. But whatever. Although, I must say, Mike Pollock did an amazing job in this game delivering his lines. Speaking of delivering their lines, I do find it weird that maybe it's just me, but all of Sonic's lines in this game seem really compressed for no reason, even playing it on the PC port. How did this happen? We need to find that thing, and fast! Anyways, the final boss is your typical supersonic boss where you dodge stuff, collect rings, and boost to the boss's weak point. Rinse repeat until it explodes, falling into the infinite void of nothingness where Eggman spends the rest of his life. Until Forces comes around and nobody explains how he got out of the white void. Honestly, Sonic Generations is one of my favorite video games ever and it's probably my favorite Sonic game, aside from Mania, but we'll talk about that another time. And I highly recommend you go out and buy it if you don't own it already. It's like 20 bucks, it's on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Steam, and you can play it on PS4 and Xbox One with the first two, so there's really no reason to not buy it, unless you don't have the money, which I perfectly respect. Um, so, I don't know what to say, like, comment, and subscribe, dislike if you didn't like it, tell me how I did, I'm trying to return to content I used to make. Because I have no clue what to do right now because I'm super bored. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, bye.